Welcome YouTube to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a nano reef properly. So here are the things you probably need for a saltwater aquarium or a nano reef. Uh, so let me start off with the tubes. Um, you're going to need a siphon tube, a drip tube, and an extra tube just in case something happens to the other tubes. Uh, you don't need an extra tube, but I recommend it just to save time. Uh, so I made my own drip tube. Make sure, it, just tie knots um, at some point in the drip tube and make sure it does one to two drips per second for the acclimation. I'll do another video on acclimation in a second. Um, you're gonna want a separate just fish tank towel. Uh, since mine's a tiny tank, I just use a tiny towel. Uh, but also, you wanna use a big towel sometimes. I have a microfiber uh, towel just to clean the outside of the glass. It really helps. You don't need it, but I just recommend it. Um, here's a measuring cup that basically came with one of a uh, chemical I had a long time ago. So I use it. There's another one on one of those chemicals over there. And um, you're gonna wanna use a magnetic scrubber. I personally recommend it because sometimes it can just get annoying reaching to the tank and getting your hands all wet sometimes. So just keep this in the aquarium. Sometimes just scrub the glass every day or every other day. To keep the glass clean. You're gonna want a net. So uh, like if a fish dies or if there's anything in the tank you wanna get out, just get a net. A net. Here's a toothbrush just for cleaning the glass where that's or rocks or sand um, that this can't reach. It works really well, I recommend it. This is for measuring out salt. The salt I use is instant ocean, uh, instant ocean just salts. I, it says half a cup per gallon. I think maybe a cup per gallon is better sometimes, but I'm re I'm seeing if it works because sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, you're going to pocket knife for getting out the little plastic metal aluminum things on the caps or for anything else like packages that come in. Uh, you're gonna also going to want a hydrometer. A hydrometer or a refractum refractometer, it just tests the salinity. Refractometers are better, but they're a little more expensive. Um, you're going to want a type of fish food. Some fish like are herbivores and some are carnivores. This is brine shrimp. I recommend it for when you're first getting fish. It will just get the fish to eat because these are less nutrition, more like taste. Then you can eat, put them on mysis and stuff. Maybe even flakes someday, depends on what fish they are. Um, you're going to want, this is just like a fish book. Um, what it means is you want to do lots of research or just get that type of book that has lots of um, information and true information about aquariums and research your fish before you get them. Um, about lights, this is a stock light and a lid. It doesn't really work for the for corals. That's why I bought a new light. It's uh, a Homber LED extendable light. It's 8,000 to 10,000 Kelvin and 460 to 470 nanometers for the blues. Um, the reason I say it's like that number or this number is because it could be, this is meant for 5 to 15 gallons. Um, depends on how big your, like how far away the size of your aquarium are. And uh, if, it could be like 10,000 K for a small tank, but it could be like 8,000 K for a bigger tank. Um, it is homebrew you can buy on Amazon. It's really well, not really well, it's really good. It has blues and whites, but the whites have blues on too. Uh, you might want a lid for the jumping fish like grasses or gobies or blennies, but I'm not getting this fish and I'm just crossing my fingers that they don't hop out. Um, but I also can't have a lid because my ventilation in my house is very slow and that leads to carbon dioxide buildup. Um, Next thing you need is a test kit. I recommend API just because it's cheap and it works pretty well. I've always used it and um, works really well. You can probably buy better ones for more expensive that are more accurate, but these are pretty accurate for their price. And they always are, they still always seem right for how my fish are acting. Um, you're going to want a type of pH buffer, but unless, if you have a two part doser or a doser for. Um, pH just don't you don't really need to get one sometimes salts have them it can raise alkalinity to like the highest I've ever had it is 32 dkh you should have a 8 to 12 dkh and for some reefers it's kind of hard to even get to 12 dkh so be careful on how much you use this it says to use it daily right there uh, let me see if it focuses there we go um, add one teaspoon daily to 10 gallons I recommend just putting in and just Watch your pH, see if it goes low. Watch your alkalinity, see if you can add more. Um, but use two-part dosers instead of a buffer. That's what I like more because it does it keeps pH more stable. 
Garlic guard is for, say, if your fish have, like, a parasite or disease. Um, this makes your fish kind of hungry, and they'll just come and eat the food. Um, this is, I think it's the second best bacteria booster or cycler on the market. Number one is Biospira, but Biospira is super expensive, so I don't really recommend that. I recommend it, but if you want to spend your money on that, go ahead. Um, this works really well. It does over a three-day span, so if, say, for your first bacteria dose, some of them die, you add more, and it just keeps it going. It works really well if you have some past aquariums. Some experts recommend it. If you don't have an RO system, you're going to want tap water conditioner by API. This works really well because it removes chlorine and chloramines. Make sure your decoordinator removes that. And another thing about RO systems, if you don't have them, I'll show you what this is in a second. Um, for optimal pH, calcium, magnesium, alkalinity, and trace elements, stability, or even having them in the aquarium, is a two-part dose. And the one I recommend is Kent Marine Nano Reef Part A and B. This adds calcium, magnesium, um, trace elements. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off just so you can see this better. And... Uh, it also, the second bottle adds alkalinity and keeps the alkalinity stable at about 10 dKH, even 12 dKH sometimes. Um, and it keeps pH stable. This is uh, Purple Tech by Kent. I use it every, um, sometimes daily, sometimes every other day in my pasta aquariums. I've had pasta order aquariums, so if you ever say I do this sometimes, just know it's from my pasta aquariums. And uh, it basically, sometimes the during the day, sometimes it actually during the day calcium and alkalinity is absorbed by the corals and some other invertebrae so at night this um, just adds more calcium and alkalinity to keep it stable through the night and also helps coralline grow in your tank and flourish it's mainly used for freshwater plants I use it um, for macroalgae sometimes and just add extra trace elements for the corals works pretty well just don't use too much of it or else you might get brown algae and other algae growth um, Parashield is for if your fish get a parasite or a disease. Uh, it, if you use the right amount, which is like half the amount of dosage, uh, it's safe for your corals and vertebrae. It even says it right there. Um, two small words for the video camera, so I'm not going to even try. Uh, basically just adds a slime coat to your fish and protects it from any parasites. It's mainly for parasites instead of diseases, though. Um, for your tank, a Pico Reef is one gallon to five gallons, or even less than that. I don't re recommend it to any beginner or even some experienced hobbyists. Uh, Nano Reef is 5 gallons to 30 gallons. Anything above that is uh, 40 gallons. Anything above that is just a normal reef. So, like 30 gallons plus. Um, I've had lots of Nano Reefs before, so I've experienced this. Uh, mine is actually a 7 gallon ascent. The labeling actually says 6 gallons, but I did the dimension checking and it's actually 7 gallons. Um, and obviously, like I said before, I'll turn this back on. You want a light, good light. Um, this is a Humber. You can find it on Amazon for like $18. It's really it's really good. Um, I've had it in my past aquariums too. Um, you're gonna, obviously going to want some rock. Dry rock is for if you don't want any hitchhikers in your tank that are bad, like Aptasia, bristle worms, or those little sea, um, starfish. But I have dry rock and live rock in my tank just to help things get boosted. So, uh, those are pretty good. And you can use sand or live sand. Mine is live sand. And, uh, it basically adds bacteria to the tank to help it get started. It looks pretty good. Make sure you get sand. Some people do bare bottoms, which I don't recommend because air ammonia can get pretty high with bare bottoms. But it's easier to clean, so that's why people do it. Um, you're gonna... Uh, okay, I showed you that, but, um, the, sometimes your salt water, it will make little creases right here. This is a used tank, so I cleaned it out. Um, they'll make little lines there, and you want to get that out, because sometimes it can just fall back on the tank when your tank evaporates, and uh, it can make the salinity a little bit higher slowly, so you don't want to do that. Um, so if you don't have an RO system here, uh, I'm actually going to get this light really quick just so you guys can see. Okay, so... If you don't have an RO system, this is what I recommend. You get a bucket, and you fill it with the um, amount of water you need to fill it back up, your tank back up after a water change. And you put all the salt in, and you put all the uh, buffers, what do you, whatever you need to put in the court, in the tap water, in the water change water. And you're going to get either an air stone, a pump, an extra filter, or just one of them. And you're going to aerate your 
water for about 24 hours with the salt and everything in it and also have a heater in it so it matches your aquarium temperature and that basically just gets all the heavy metals and core mines and chlorines out um, if your dechlorinator didn't get them out for some reason and uh, it also just makes the other parameters stable like pH um, the reason I have all these things in here at, at the same time is because I don't need them in my tank right now so why not um, so you're always going to want a heater, maybe two, for water changes like this if you don't have an RO system. Um, I recommend for this size, this size of tank, uh, six or seven gallon or nano reefs, about 50 watts, maybe 100 watts if you have a bigger nano reef, like 30 gallon, maybe 200 watt for 30 gallon. Uh, and I have a preset one, it works pretty well, Always, I've used some past frames at the same heater. Um, for some smaller tanks, you're going to want to get a power head right there. And you're going to do about 20 25 percent, not percent, times the amount of flow that your gallon is. So, say if I have five gallons, I'm going to do 20 times that. So, 20 times five is about um, 500, <laughs> 100, and that's like a 100 gallon flow rate. So, you want to get about 100 GPH, which means gallons per hour power head, and that will keep your uh, flow about medium level flow. Um, you're going to want a nice filter. I have a filter that's recommended for 10 gallons. It's also made by Aquion. And uh, let me just set this right there. So what I have in my filter is I actually took out the carbon that came with it and I put um, Seachem denitrate, denitrate in this. It works really well. Um, and it just keeps the nitrates low or even zero. And underneath this is a big bag of carbon that like this level, this amount of denitrate is about that thick. So below is a huge bag of carbon it's meant for 30 gallons. They keep it in there. And here's a sponge just for more surface area for bacteria. Here's the air stone I use for um, aerating the water. And since my house has very low ventilation, I use a fan to keep the oxygen and the flow exchange good. Uh, here's a good pump. It's adjustable. You can find the, you can find these all on Amazon. Uh, by the way, so. These are the things you need. You're also going to need just a water change bucket to get the water out of the aquarium. And you'd fill this water back up with the buckets. And so yeah, guys, uh, that's how, you, those are the things you need for a solder in a reef. Uh, and kind of a setup. For the setup, what I recommend is just put in sand first and put the rocks in for to keep your rocks where you want it. And push the sand up against the rocks so there's no holes where gobies can go underneath. That's what I recommend. I, it works pretty well. Um, when you're first get putting this stuff in your aquarium, make sure you, I like to double it for like uh, first water because it gets the levels the right level. Um, make sure you test your water at least once every other day, or even when your tank is more stable, about once a week. Test your salinity every day or every other day. Uh, this is baking soda. It can be used as pH buffer. I think I forgot to show you guys. But I recommend just getting a buffer instead of a, that. But that's a very like low percentage. Like it won't get your alkalinity as high. Uh, make sure you're safe. If you use a knife. Um, and thank you guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. There'll be lots of videos coming soon. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Bye. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna leave links in the description for the things I got. Thank you guys. Have a good day.